Hi guys. So LDAP is a great way of storing large amounts of either employee information or um, customer information or printer information or shares on your network. It's a great way of storing large amounts of information and get have quick access to it. Um, a lot of companies use LDAP for some sort of sort central authentication system for anywhere from your login to your website to your computer to a tablet to a web portal. So tons of things you could use to authenticate and access anything from your shares to your printers to your account. So because of that, it makes it very important for a lot of companies. If LDAP goes down, that means access either for employees or customers will go down. So the best thing you should do when you're actually running LDAP servers is to make sure they're up, right? You want to make sure they're being monitored and that you know before the customer knows if something goes wrong. You don't want your employees telling you, you can't, they can't log in, they can't access their share, they can't print. You same thing with your customers. You don't want your customers unable to access the services your company offers because your LDAP server is down. So today I thought I would do a quick video on a really quick, easy test you could do to see if you can bind to your LDAP server using Nagios. So there's a Nagios plugin I'm going to show you how to use, and it's just a quick bind, very fast, and it just lets you know that it checks every few minutes and lets you know if it can't bind to your LDAP server. If it can't bind, that means it's indicating there is a problem with your LDAP server. Either it's down or there's some other issue that you should go take a look at. So I'll show you today how to access and use Nagios to do a quick check on your LDAP servers to make sure everything's okay. So just keep watching, really fast tutorial. So just keep watching and I'll show you how fast you can start checking your LDAP servers are up. The first thing you want to do is go to the Nagios Exchange site, exchange.nagios.org. They have tons and tons of just plugins and scripts pre-written uh, by tons of developers around the world. So it's a great location. It's been around forever, so it just has a huge, huge repository of everything. So you do a quick search for LDAP. You can see you can search for if you want to check if it's being replicated properly, if you want to check the master LDAP server, if you want to authenticate. So Nagios itself has user accounts that can authenticate off LDAP or, you know, Active Directory if you do your, um, if you know your protocols, you know how that's compatible. So you kind of do a bunch of different LDAP checks. So the LDAP check I just want to do is a very basic LDAP check to make sure it's up and running. So it's just called LDAP, check LDAP, and it does a really quick bind to your LDAP server. So it's nothing too complicated. It helps you get started really easily. So I set up a little test LDAP server added a couple users, a couple OUs, make sure it's running. I opened up the port, make sure it's running. So it's after it was a little test environment as if it was a production environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on check LDAP um, and go ahead and take a look at it. Now it has some pre-written um, scripts in here. So it's Perl. The Perl uh, will actually require some uh, Perl library to be installed, but if you're using CentOS or Red Hat, CentOS or Red Hat, it actually just a quick yum install will get it. So you kind of see the options here. Does a quick bind. You could check um, LDAP or LDAP S to see if, it's, if you're running um, secure LDAP. You could do an anonymous bind or authenticated bind. Yeah, a lot of people might disable any sort of anonymous binding to your LDAP server. If you're doing that, then go ahead and do authenticated. So for my environment, I decided to not um, to not authenticate with um, credentials. So I, anonymous uh, will return a limited result. So when you do that, um, I'm going to go ahead, cause just partly because I don't like putting my credentials in a text file. So I kind of try to prevent that. So if you're going to do a quick net stat listening, and this is on the Linux server itself that's running LDAP services. So I'm going to do a quick check. See my port's running. It's LDAP. Um, if you're ever unsure what port it's the protocol is running at, so let's say it just says LDAP or MySQL, <clears throat> you can go actually check out the file etc services. And this controls what name is actually comes back from a netstat listen listening command. It will actually tell you which port, and it, that's the where it, collects that information to display it. So you can quickly check that it's the default port uh, for LDAP. Um, if you change the port, of course, you could change it in the script here. There is uh, changing the port option. So I'm gonna go ahead and download my two scripts. I'm actually gonna only use the Perl script for, um, for checking. 
Um, I won't actually be using this one. It's a bash script. Um, so the Perl script does everything I need to do a quick bind. Um, <clears throat> so once you do that, I'm going to open up a terminal window and the terminal window will allow us to take a look at our scripts. And I like to run it before I actually put it in the command file and the Linux uh, client configuration file. I actually like to run it on the command line to make sure that it's working the way um, it's um, supposed to. So if there's any sort of additional um, apps that need to be installed or services that need to be running, it kind of will give you an error here. So that's nice. So if I did a uh, Perl, um, I probably don't even need to put that Perl command in the beginning there, but I did. So um, Perl and then check LDAP. And I notice it's missing a net LDAP. And this is a uh, Perl library. A Perl module that needs to be installed and actually you don't have to um, download and compile it like you did years ago if you actually did a yum search it comes right up so yum search <clears throat> and I just search for LDAP it gives, comes back with everything LDAP so just a quick and there'll be tons of things but it's easy enough to find so here's our results so if you scroll up a little bit you want to find the one that says Perl and LDAP so here we go Perl LDAP no architecture so I'm going to just going to do a yum install Perl hyphen LDAP. So really quick, it installed any prerequisite uh, dependencies. I'm sorry, dependencies, and it just quickly takes a few minutes. And once it's done, we go back to that same command, check LDAP, and this time it will work correctly, which is really nice. So super fast, there we go. So you know our, now our plugin will work. So let's go ahead and go into the Nagios configuration files. So we're gonna go into um, lib exe, lib executable, and this is where all the um, plugins are kept, they're stored. So they're stored in one location. This is where Nagio server goes looking for the plugins as well. So you want to make sure you put it in the correct directory, your plugin, to make sure the Nagio server will find it and work correctly. So we're going to copy it from our downloads folder. So just tilde means our home directory and downloads and then check and I use anything to start with check and the dot means present working directory. So we have our two scripts. I'm just going to go ahead and modify the permission so they're executable. They are scripts so they need to be executable and they need to be owned by Nagios because um, Nagios server is run by the user Nagios. So if you don't give it the right permissions it might not run correctly. So let's go ahead and take a quick quickly do that. So just a quick change mon. 755, um, that's for full read, write, execute for owner, and then read and execute for everyone else, and change owner, so Nagios user, Nagios owner, and then we have, <clears throat> do a quick check on our scripts, and you see that they're now configured like the rest of them, so the Nagios server will have full access. And if you're ever curious about the file type, if you do file and then the file name, it kind of gives you if it's it tells you if it's Perl script or a bash script. So that's kind of nice. It's a quick way of checking your file types. So now once we've done that, I want to make sure that our command will be configured the way I want. So I want to make sure that I can actually bind to my LDAP server with this script. Again, this is all before we're even configuring the files. And again, I do this to make sure once I configure the files, it's working. It's one less, one easy way of troubleshooting before actually just configuring it on and it's a little harder to determine where the problem is. So just a quick minus H and give it the host, it will actually just return. So that's an anonymous bind to the default LDAP port, non-secure LDAP, non-encrypted LDAP. So once we do that, the first thing you want to do is go into the commands folder and we're going to define a command. So it's under our ETC, I'm sorry, our LDAP folder, it's under um, ETC in our Nagios folder. So we're going to say define command, command name, check LDAP. It's named after the script, but it doesn't have to be. That's just, um, it's pretty commonly done, but it's not required. And then the command that's going to run, so command line, so dollar users one, and that points to the directory with all the plugins that's being stored. So, and then in there we have our check LDAP, PL script. Now I like to know the commands, arguments I'm going to use. So I'm actually going to go back and take a look at my arguments again that are optional. So we take a quick look. You see minus H is the host, minus L, login, minus X, the password for that login, and the login is the DN line. 
So if you know your DN line for either a user or manager, I wouldn't recommend manager, but you could. Um, and I'll be using manager for this demo just because it's easily, easy, but you want to put maybe a less uh, privileged user as to authenticate with if you don't have anonymous authentication. So I'm going to put minus S and if that's what LDAP S authenticated. So I'll go to port 636, I believe, for LDAP S. So and that's host. So it does a try to do anonymous bind on LDAP S with just minus H, the host name minus S. Now a quick easy test to make sure our authentication works is go back to that command line. And we're going to do uh, the check LDAP Perl script. Now we press this use the minus L and the minus X option and we provide the DN line for our authenticated user. So I'm using manager here. I wouldn't recommend using manager. I'll use a less privileged user for your configuration because this will be stored in a um, clear text file. Even if you limit authentication to um, just your sysadmins, if that machine ever get compromised, it's just another um, way of escalating privileges in your environment from a hacker so if they find the file. So you want to make sure that it's a less privileged user on your LDAP server if your machines ever get a chance of being compromised. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do to go back to our command file. You want to do a check LDAP.pl. We're going to do the minus L argument one because we're going to pass it in from the Linux client and then we're going to do a minus X and then we're going to specify the um, password. Okay. And that's going to be argument two. So it's arg two. So the variable. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and save this file. And we're going to go and look at our Linux um, client configuration file. And that's what's running our LDAP server. So linuxclient.conf. Let's just do a quick VI on the file. And we're going to define a new service. There's lots of examples here. If you ever forget the um, syntax for this file, just look at one of the sample services. So define service, open bracket, close bracket. We're going to use local services. So that's just a default template for information about um, like when to notify uh, sysadmins, um, just different configurations for the client. If you go and take a look at that. It's actually one of the other configurations. If you watch my Linux server video, it goes over a little bit more. So there's host name, check command. So it's going to be check LDAP. So you just want to make sure I just accidentally typed it in wrong. I'll go back and fix it. Check LDAP. And this is a command we defined um, in our commands file. And now we specify the arguments. So the exclamation separates the arguments. So this is argument one. If you remember we, in our commands file, we did minus L, argument one. And then, and this is our DN line to authenticate. And then our exclamation and then argument two. So it's going to be our um, manager password. Great, so um, I think you actually skipped that last exclamation, uh, but we keep on going and go specify um, notification enabled. Yes, I would like to be notified. And then um, contact group. So who's gonna be contact in case the service goes down? So it does, if you look at the script, you remember it has okay and then critical. So if this service goes into critical, who should be notified? And in this case, it will be <clears throat> Linux group. Okay, and then just let's add the last field, service description, and we're going to call it LDAP. This is the string that will appear on the Nagios website, monitoring website, under the host service. Let's go ahead and restart Nagios service. If the configuration files are all correct, this should come back as OK. Um, if there's any sort of uh, configuration issues, it will pop up here. And usually I recommend backing up your configuration files to GitHub. It has great version control. If you have any sort of issue, you can always go back. So let's now go check out our Nagios website. Let's click on host. So there's Nagios Linux client. And if you notice, we will now have our new service as LDAP will be listed. It's under pending. So it's scheduled to test. It hasn't test yet. It's scheduled to test. And just wait a few minutes. Everything works out. Your configuration all works out and it can authenticate. It will go ahead and have a green indication meaning our service is up and running. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you check your LDAP server. No one needs your central authentication system having any issues. It's probably one of the most visible things that could actually go down that might cause the biggest problems for any single company. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.